It's January and it is perhaps the darkest, brownest, most glum month in the gardening year. But I'm here at the allotment garden because there's plenty that I need to catch up with. So I've just been wandering around my plots and snipping anything that needs trimming back, been creating a mound of material that will need to be composted. And then I'm over here on the new plot today because I want to tackle a grassy area. And my plan this year is to manure it and then cover it with a membrane that I can plant directly through. So I'm thinking pumpkins. Now the reason that I'm planning to do that is that I am a no-dig gardener now and there's bindweed here on this plot. So it's my hope that having it covered for maybe a full year will help to kill off the bindweed that's under there. And also I'll be able to get a crop out of it in the meantime. So that is the plan. We've got quite a few other things to do here, or I do, here on the plot. Lots of clearing. I've got more manure to spread, but incredibly it is actually quite warm for mid-January now. It is 9 or 10 degrees Celsius today and those are the kind of temperatures that you get generally in spring and in autumn, not really in January. I went out and saw my bees just now and they are flying around. So generally if, if you do get a, a mild day in January, February, you will see honeybees flying about. So I'm going to start cracking on with this plot. I'm going to film a little bit of the process and then I thought we could have a walk around the site and I'll show you my allotment garden in all its glorious brownness. <laughs> kind of the blank slate before the gardening year ahead. hours bringing manure onto this new half plot of mine or new-ish half plot and then today I came back to cover it with a weed resistant membrane and I'm doing this because I just don't have time to tackle this plot this year properly so actually clearing it and maintaining it weeding it etc and this is just gonna make it so much easier using a no dig method so I just laid manure over the top covered it with the membrane and then I reckon I could probably get about eight pumpkins or squash through the membrane this year and the material will keep the weeds down it will you know protect the soil and I'll be able to focus my attention on other projects namely the new back garden so this is my solution for being able to keep this half plot and you'll remember from quite a few videos ago that I was actually contemplating giving it up. So hopefully this solution works. Right, with the hard work finished now, I think that it's time to have a little walk around the plot. And while I've been working, I've noticed quite a few things starting to pop up. So I thought that we could just have a, a wander around with our noses to the ground and look for some signs of life. From first glance, it does look quite barren, the allotment garden. There's a lot of manure that I've put on the bed, so it's covering the soil and protecting it. This is the strawberry bed. The center is all clear and it's ready for those new strawberries that I have in the greenhouse. I'll plant them out probably in March. And one of the first things that comes up every year here on my allotment are these. And these are garlic chives. Aren't they gorgeous? I have two types of rhubarb and I'm not sure what variety this one is, but it doesn't actually start growing until a little bit further on in the spring. But over on my other plot, and we'll have a walk over there right now, just down here below where I've put all of this membrane, I've got another rhubarb though. There were quite a few rhubarb plants down here. I 
gave away most of them, but I kept this one. And I believe that it's Victoria, the variety. I could be wrong, but I suspect it is Victoria. And it actually came from one of my Victoria rhubarbs from my original plot that I gifted to the person who had this plot before. But you can see it is already sprouting. So I'm going to have some very early rhubarb here. This entire bed is planted up with a variety of alliums. So I've got my onions and garlic and also shallots in here. And just look at how many leaves they all have and how tall they are. They are really coming on. All of the onions and everything is up except for the more recently planted garlic but I haven't checked let's go see if we can see if any of them have sprouted oh my goodness look so those garlic the garlic that I planted on the winter solstice they're already up as well over here in the brassica bed there's still quite a bit of kale and I'll pick a few leaves now before I head home and then the purple sprouting broccoli is all growing and pressing up against the netting. I've taken most of the purple Brussels sprouts out, but the heads here are edible, I hear. I've never eaten them before, but someone left it as a comment in one of the um, recent videos. So I'm gonna take one of these home, I think today as well, and cook it up and see what it's like. The herb bud is looking a little bit untidy, but it's, Still got some flowers in it, so we've got some calendula flowers persevering. The rosemary here, I had to replant it uh, yesterday when I was up because it had been pulled completely out of the ground. I don't know if it's going to survive. I cut quite a bit off of it and I planted it quite deep, so the stems are about I don't know, three inches under the ground, the base of the plant. And with rosemary and lavender, they will grow roots from the stems. So that's my hope that it will recover. We'll see though. Every time that I come up here, I tidy and take some dead plants down or trim some canes or whatnot. I've just been piling them all here together and these will eventually be composted. Now over here, this is my wildlife pond and flower area. The lavender I just trimmed back, so all the brown stems are looking a little bit tidier. This is a Cape gooseberry, Physalis. And usually they don't survive the winter, and I'll be honest, I forgot about it, and it was covered by another plant. But it has been so mild that it's doing all right, so I'm going to pop fleece over this and give it a little bit of protection and hopefully it'll continue growing next year. So they produce these really yummy orange berries in a kind of a paper lantern shell. I'm sure you've seen them before. It's been a while since I brought you over to see the gin makers hedge on this side of our allotment but I planted it almost a year ago and it has really come on. There are quite a few different types of native fruit bearing shrubs here. So there's elder, there's crab apples, blackthorn, various types of wild roses, wild pear and wild, wild cherry even. And the intention along here is to grow quite a thick hedge over time and it will provide some wild fruit for us in the autumn and also food and shelter for birds and wildlife. Isn't it incredible that although it is the middle of January, there's loads that is starting to come up out of the earth right now here on the Isle of Man. I don't know about where you are. Let me know as a comment down below. Do you have snow or are you starting to see things start to pop up as well? We've got obviously the garlic chives that we just had a look at and the rhubarb is starting to come up and lots of the bulbs and the brassicas are still there, of course. They're netted against all the pheasants here and they'll start to shoot up with purple sprouting broccoli very soon and the kale and, you know, there is a lot going on here. So winter gardening isn't necessarily just gray and brown and lifeless. There's still a lot going on. 
And speaking of that, there is loads I still need to do here at the allotment garden and of course back home in the home garden. So I'll be back with you next week, so same time, same day, for another gardening update. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a good rest of the weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.